question four. It, we need to find, verify that this is the character of the polynomial of that matrix. So one way to do that would be to calculate the character of the polynomial just in a normal way from A, and hopefully it'll come to whatever that is, come to that, what they say it is. Is there a different way of doing it? Is there a way of verifying it without actually doing calculation? I can't think of such a way. Let me know in the comments if you know such a way. I'm just going to go ahead and reluctantly calculate this character polynomial. So, uh, so the character polynomial is going to be, it's like a minus lambda i, the determinant of that. So a is 1 minus 1 minus 2. 1 minus 1 minus 2. 0, 2, 0, 0, 2, 0, and then minus 1, minus 1, 0. 0, 2, 0, then minus 1, minus 1, 0. I'm going to check that because I don't want to do the whole wrong thing. 1, 0, minus 1. That's the first column, row. 1, 0, minus 1, then minus 1, 2, minus 1. Minus 1, 2, minus 1, and then minus 2, 0, 0. Minus 2, 0, 0, yeah, okay. And we're looking to get the characteristic polynomial 2 minus lambda minus 1 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda squared minus 1 minus lambda. Okay. So the characteristic polynomial is. So this is A. This is question 4. Okay, so. Carrick. Characteristic polynomial is a minus lambda i determinant, right? Um, and that is what it's one minus lambda zero minus one minus one two minus lambda minus one minus two zero. Zero. Oh, not zero there. Minus lambda. Okay. So I like to calculate these by gas reducing and stuff. Ah, but first of all, we can actually take out that 2 minus lambda because it's in a column which is zeros apart from it. So we have 1 minus lambda, minus 1, minus 2, 0, 1. Oh. Effectively, what you can do rather is you expand down that, expand down that column. And what you have left is just the determinant of the minor. Okay, cool. And it's uh, things on the diagonal, so there's no negative there. Uh, now we can solve this with gas reduction, I think. So maybe if we do, if we try, we add. No, what should we do? We let's. Let's add. Oh, we can also do columns, can't we? We should do a column. I would like this to come into an upper triangular, but I can't see how I'm going to get rid of that minus two. Okay, let's just do. Let's just do. Add row two and row one. I think that's going to give us something nice. So we have two minus lambda, and then we have minus. 2 plus 1 minus lambda, so that becomes minus 1 minus lambda. And then here we also have minus 1 minus lambda. Yes, that is indeed nice. And then minus 1 lambda minus 1. So now we factorize out that, that minus 1 minus lambda. So, so far we've got two factors that are indeed in the character polynomial that they, that they gave us. So we have 1, 1. So I'd like can I get this upper I like this to be upper triangular. Oh, it's not it's actually easy I think just to calculate this directly now. This determinant directly. So we have one minus lambda and then minus minus one. So plus one. So that's two minus lambda. So the whole thing indeed does come to two minus lambda squared times by minus one minus lambda. 
Okay, so that's the fixed point of the calculated. Now they said, uh, can it be diagonalized? So we need three independent eigenvectors and we want to diagonalize it, so we need to find the eigenvectors for two, because that's where there might be a problem, where there might be two as repeated eigenvalues, so there might be only one eigenvector in that eigenspace. There might be an eigenspace dimension one, and then it won't be diagonalized. So, um, I can say that, you know, that AV equals 2V, but only if now you, you, know, you subtract one side from the other and you get what you get. You get you have 1 minus lambda, but now lambda is 2, so you have minus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 2 minus 2 is 0. That's one, and then minus two, zero, minus two. Okay. And now this is going to have this is going to have two free variables. So they, we are going to have to diagonalize this. So row two. Do row two, row two minus row one and row three. Minus two times row one, and you could also times row one by negative, and then that will give you. One zero one zero 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 v equals zero. Okay, and so that means that the eigen what that means. So what are two possible eigen independent eigenvectors here? Um, so this means that in fact isn't it? Yeah. It means that uh, it means that what, so one of the eigen eigenvectors could be if you have one zero minus one I cancel out. Another one could be if you just have These are eigenvectors. Yeah, I'm pulling that. No, I think it's whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's enough to have an implication. It doesn't need to be a double implication. These eigenvectors for, for lambda equals 2. Eigenvector 2. So it can be diagonalized. The linear cos linear. Okay. So that means that A has so A has three linearly independent eigen vectors and thus can be diagonalized. To actually diagonalize it, we need to find the third eigenvector. So that corresponds to when lambda equals um, one. So when lambda equals minus one, it's minus one. And so, in other words, a v equals minus one times v, if and only if. Now we do this minus thing again. So we have what? So we have lambda is now going to be minus one. So we have one plus one is two. So on top we have two, zero, minus one. Then Minus one, so we have. So, so this, so this becomes two plus one, which is three, and this becomes minus minus one, which is one. So we have the next row is minus one three minus one, minus one three minus one. The last row is minus two zero one, minus two zero one, and this should give us one. Eigenvector. Okay, we have to reduce it. So we can do row three plus row one. Um, we could do two times row two plus row one also. Okay, then that will give us. 
give us 2, 0, minus 1, and then here we'll have 0, 0, 0. In the second row, we we'll give minus 2 plus 2, which is 0, 6 plus 0, which is 6, and minus 2 plus minus 1, which is minus 3. Okay. So this whole thing is saying uh, the next we can also do now we do row two over three. Row, divide row two by three and get two, zero, minus one, zero, two. Yeah, minus one and zero zero zero. Okay, so we've got one free variable, of course, vected. We just need so we just need one vector to satisfy this. So so a vector that satisfies this is what you could have. Could you you have one and two here so that those cancel out, and then you have but now you have an extra minus now you have a minus for the second row you have a minus two. So you want that to cancel out with this two. So you have a one there. That would be your right. One, one, two. Uh, two minus two. Two minus two, yes. Okay. So that's eigenvector. Should be. Um, so the next step is to. You know what? We should actually check these eigenvectors. So we can check them by actually doing the multiplication. So a is, so we have 1, 0, minus 1. So let me just check it in a different color. No, let me not. Let me just check it. Okay. So one, so the first second value we find, the vector we found is 1, 0, minus 1. So times that by 1, 0, minus 1, what you get? You get, um, you get 2. Minus one, minus one. You get well, minus one plus one, zero, and then minus two, and that is indeed two times that. So that thing was indeed an eigen vector. The x one eigen vector for eigen vector for two is zero one zero. That a times zero one zero that gives us um, zero two. Zero. Yep, that's two times that. That's correct. And finally, the eigenvalue vector for one, for minus one was one one two. One one two. Uh, so you multiply that, you get one minus two is minus one. Minus one plus two. Minus one plus 2 minus 2 it's just minus 1 and minus 2 and indeed that's minus 1 times that so yes, so all the eigenvectors we found are, the, are correct, they're actually eigenvectors um, and we've got these eigenvectors now so we got to write down this diagonalization equation have we actually got it? oh it just says give P and D so the point is that I know that now that Okay, so if d equals 2, 2, minus 1, and p equals, now the columns of p must be the eigenvectors, so 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 1, 1, 2. And this thing is true. What? How do you write it? Um, it's like AP equals PD. So P inverse AP equals D because P is inversible because it's linearly, not linearly independent, diagon linearly independent columns. Okay, that's it.